Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about bladder innovation, micturition reflex and important points about the systometrogram. Now please concentrate guys here. Your bladder is innervated both by the parasympathetic neurons as well as the sympathetic neurons. We all know. Okay, most of our body organs are innervated by both parasympathetic nerve fibers as well as sympathetic nerve fibers. Okay, so the parasympathetic nerve innervation is coming from which spinal nerves? S2, S3 and S4 spinal nerves are carrying the parasympathetic fibers which are innervating the bladder. Now what is the function of this parasympathetic innervation? The function is that these parasympathetic fibers will go and innervate a muscle around the urinary bladder. Now what is that muscle sir? It is detrusor. So detrusor muscle is innervated by the parasympathetic fibers from S2, S3 and S4 and that parasympathetic innervation helps in contraction of the urinary bladder, helps in micturition. Now these parasympathetic fibers not only innervate the bladder but also innervate urethral sphincter. Which urethral sphincter? Internal urethral sphincter. Now internal urethral sphincter is normally involuntary in nature. Okay, it's not under your voluntary control. Okay, there is external urethral sphincter. That external urethral sphincter is under your control. You can withhold the urine by contracting that sphincter. But right now what we are discussing? We are discussing about the internal urethral sphincter. The internal, internal urethral sphincter is innervated by S2, S3 and S4. Helps in relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter. When internal urethral sphincter is relaxed, that will facilitate the micturition. Okay. So, whenever a person is micturating, what should happen? Bladder needs to be contracted. At the same time, the internal urethral sphincter needs to be relaxed. Okay, so that is the parasympathetic activity. Now the bladder is not only innervated by the parasympathetic activity but also innervated by the sympathetic activity. Sympathetic innervation is coming from which neurons? L1, L2 and L3. L1, L2, L3 spinal nerves are carrying the sympathetic neurons to the bladder. See, the sympathetic innervation is not having a major role in micturition. Not having a major role in micturition. This uh, sympathetic innervation mainly helps in prevention of the retrograde ejaculation. Okay. So, during a sexual activity, the ejaculation should be in a forward, forward movement or the anti-grade way. It should not be going back, like you know, the cement should not be going back and like you know, mixing with the urine in the bladder. So, who prevents this? So, the sympathetic activity L1, L2, L3 spinal nerves are innervating the new, uh, innervating the bladder helps in prevention of retrograde ejaculation. Okay. Now, let's talk about the external urethral sphincter. I have already taught you internal urethral sphincter is supplied by the parasympathetic neurons, no doubt. See, right now I am talking about the external urethral sphincter. Now, this external urethral sphincter, when, whenever it is contracted, okay, whenever it is contracted, you can hold the urine for certain amount of time. Even you have, you, you have the sensation of micturition. You, you have the feeling to void the bladder. But still you can withhold the urine for some time, right? Okay, whenever you are in a class or whenever you are in a conference, you can withhold the urine. It's under your voluntary control. How you are doing that? By contracting the external urethral sphincter. And who is innervating the external urethral sphincter? See, neurons from the Onoff's nucleus. There is a nucleus called as Onoff's nucleus in the spinal cord. Now, the neurons from the Onoff's nucleus are again coming to the external urethral sphincter via the pudendal nerve. So, neurons from the Onoff's nucleus are coming via the pudendal nerve, innervating the external urethral sphincter helps you in holding the, withholding the urine. Now, external urethral sphincter also completed. Let's talk about the centers which are present in your brain which will facilitate the process of maturation and which will inhibit the process of maturation. For example, there is a center which is present in your pons called as Borington center. I used to remember it like BP. Okay, BP. Borington center is present in pons. Now, this Borington center, posterior hypothalamus and paracentral lobule in the cortex all the centers, they will facilitate the maturation process. Means they will help in 
voiding the bladder. They help in urination, micturition. Okay. Now, there are inhibitory centers also. Now, the, where exactly the inhibitory center is present? Inhibitory centers for micturition are present in midbrain. This is what you need to know. So, there are three facilitatory centers. Borington center in the pons. Posterior hypothalamus is also helping in facilitation of micturition as well as the paracentral lobule also helping in facilitation of micturition. Inhibitory center is present where? In the midbrain. Now, let's see how micturition will happen. The reflux. Now, whenever the bladder is filling, okay, whenever the bladder is filling, urine is coming into the bladder, right? The volume of the bladder is increasing. When the volume of bladder is increasing, there is a stretch in the bladder muscle. Okay, there is stretch in the bladder wall. Now, this stretch increase in the stretch in the bladder wall. From the bladder wall, afferents are going into your spinal cord. Means afferents. There is this information which is taken from the bladder to the spinal cord. By which nerve? Via the pelvic nerves. So, pelvic nerves are taking this stretch information from the bladder to the spinal cord. So, these pelvic nerves are the afferents. Now, spinal cord is getting the information. Okay, the bladder is filling, bladder is stretching. Now, what should have to be done? Now, this bladder need to be emptied. Urination should happen. If urination should happen, what should be the... Uh, or uh, try to understand like this. If urination should happen or if micturition should happen, which nervous system should be activated? Parasympathetic nervous system should be activated. Now, what is the parasympathetic nervous system? Parasympathetic nervous system is the other uh, parasympathetic innervation to bladder is coming from S2, S3 and S4 spinal nerves. So, that's what happening guys. So, pelvic nerves are taking the information to the spinal cord. Now, in the spinal cord, Parasympathetic nervous system is getting activated. Parasympathetic activation is coming via S2, S3, S4 spinal nerves. When this S2, S3, S4 spinal nerves are giving the parasympathetic innervation to bladder, what will happen? Detrusor will contract. When detrusor is contracting, what will happen? Urination will happen or maturation will happen. Now, what are the afferents? Afferents are nothing but the pelvic nerves. Pelvic nerves are taking the stretch. Okay, the bladder distension, whenever the bladder is getting distended or whenever the bladder is getting stretched, this information is taken to the spinal cord. Now, spinal cord will understand, okay, bladder is stretching means bladder is getting filled. Okay, now this is the time to void the bladder, empty the bladder. So, parasympathetic outflow is going to be activated and it's going to come, come out via S2, S3, S4 spinal nerves and it will help in contraction of the bladder leading to micturition. Now, after this, let's discuss about the systometrogram, which is, a, which is a very important area for your exams. Now, what I am showing? Here, there is a graph. Now, in this graph, what we are discussing is that volume and pressure relationship in the bladder. Now, whenever the urine is coming through the ureters, okay, from the kidneys, urine is coming through the ureters and the urine is getting stored in the bladder, right? Now, whenever the urine is coming to the bladder, what happens? The volume of the bladder the volume of urine in the bladder. See, the volume of urine in the bladder is getting increased or not? Just tell me. Yes, the volume of urine in the bladder is going to be increased. At the same time, if more and more volume is getting, if more and more urine is coming into the bladder, what happened to the pressure inside the bladder? Automatically, pressure will also increase. Okay. So, that is the relationship which we are going to discuss right now. Now, in this graph, please concentrate. Initially, let's take or let's imagine the bladder is not at all having any urine. Now, what is the volume initially? The volume is also zero. So, what is the pressure inside the bladder? The pressure is also zero. See, on x-axis, I am showing the volume of the bladder. On y-axis, I am showing the pressure inside the bladder. Initially, there is no volume of urine and there is zero pressure inside the bladder. Now, What's happening? Little by little, little by little, urine starts to get accumulated inside the bladder. So now, volume is increasing. See, volume is increasing. At the same time, pressure also increased initially. But later, what happens? Now, more volume of urine start to come into the bladder. Now, whenever more volume of urine is coming into the bladder, just think logically, what should happen to the pressure? Pressure should have to increase. But in our graph, as the volume is progressing, Pressure is not increasing, okay, pressure is not increasing simultaneously, pressure is almost equal, okay, pressure is almost stabilized, there is a straight line going, the pressure is not increasing, the pressure is almost constant, 
Now, why it is so? It's because, see, more volume of urine is entering into the bladder, no doubt. More volume of urine is entering. But why the pressure is not getting increased? Because even the bladder is also distending. The bladder is stretching and accommodating the urine. So, as the volume of the urine is increasing, at the same time, the volume of the bladder, the cavity, the bladder cavity is also increasing. So, the pressure is not increasing. Okay. For example, if only urine is coming into the bladder and if the bladder is not stretching, if bladder is not stretching, then the pressure inside the bladder will increase. What happens normally? Urine is coming, urine volume is increasing, at the same time bladder is also distending. So, pressure is not increased. So, this is called as a Laplace law. Okay. Anyway, now urine volume we are increasing, increasing, increasing. When the urine volume, when it becomes 400 ml, okay, so when it becomes 400 ml, now this bladder is not going to stretch further, okay, the bladder is not going to stretch further. So, what happens? Now, the pressure starts to increase. Now, pressure is going to spike like this. So, this is area number 2, this is area number 2. Initially, when urine first started coming, we are going to give this area as 1A. Okay, we are marking it as 1A. Now, later what happened? Urine is coming. At the same time, bladder is distending, keeping the pressure constant. So, this part of the graph, I am giving the name 1B. And when the intraviscal volume or the volume of the urine inside the bladder, when it reaches, when it reaches 400 ml, then what happens? Suddenly, pressure starts to increase. I am giving number 2 to this area, okay, this part of the graph. Now, in the exam, what they have asked? See, we have discussed everything. What is 1A? Now, bladder filling started. 1A, bladder filling started. And small raise in the pressure. There is a small raise in the pressure. Yes, a little raise in the pressure. Later, what happens? Now, we have started with the graph 1B. Okay, the area of the graph 1B. Now, in the area of 1B, what's happening? Bladder filling is continuing. Okay, bladder is continuously filling. But, the bladder is also distending. Okay, accommodating the urine. So, what happens? Pressure is now constant. Now, what is 1C? When the bladder volume reaches 400 ml, intraviscal volume reaches 400 ml, when the urine volume reaches 400 ml, what happens? There is a sharp raise in the pressure. Okay, the, these are three parts of a systometrogram. Now, when the pay, uh, when the person is going to feel the first urge for urination or first urge for micturition at which volume at which volume of urine the person will first feel okay he is ha he have to go for the urination so that's a 150 ml guys please concentrate these are also important mcqs now first urge to void means empty the bladder so first urge to void will come at 150 ml filling Okay, the bladder is filled 150 ml, then he will have the first sensation that he should go for the urination. But marked sensation of fullness, now that's the point, he, he, like, you know, he can't avoid. Okay, he will simply feel like, you know, do he will be feeling like rushing to the urination, means marked sensation. Okay, he cannot withhold now. So, if the urine volume or the, the bladder volume, if it reaches 400 ml, he will have the marked sensation to go for the urination or to void the bladder. These are some important points which you need to know for your exam. See you in your next video. Thank you.